I love building things. And some of the things that we've showed you is kind of how to do DIY four by four frames and trash can lights and headlight gags that are much more DIY. This is actually professional, but it's something that you can build right at home. This is what we call the soft box. Now, it's construction is very simple and incredibly lightweight. This thing only weighs about five pounds. So the structure, and it's very rigid. We're using foam core, black foam core on this side, white foam core on the inside. We've used one by threes to be able to go around the top to create uh, the frame structure. And then the bottom, I took one by threes and we ripped them in half. So they look more like this. So we've made the frame incredibly lightweight as well. Now, you can do it either way. You can keep the one by threes down there on, on your frame uh, if you want, so you, you can make it a little beefier. But for this scenario, again, all it is is something that is now going to become the light source. We're gonna be mounting our lights up on top, and then the diffusion becomes your light source. Now I'm gonna flip this baby up on its side so you can kind of see down in it. Very simple. White foam core on the inside. Why? Because we want the lights that are also hitting the diffusion bounce all around and create a very even field. So they're gonna bounce into the light the half grid or full grid, whatever diffusion you'd like to use on the bottom here. And we have these all pre-cut. So depending on the output of your light, you'll uh, roll this out and then just with a staple gun, go through there and staple these things off. Now, when you're putting this box together, we had one and a quarter inch drywall screws. That's pretty unsafe. You wanna go with three quarter inch but there's a neat little safety tip where you can go in with either wire cutters and you can snap these off so people that are grabbing the box aren't killing themselves. So that's something just as a tip. And then if you have longer screws, put them in at a radical angle so they don't just poke all the way through. Now, how are we attaching this thing other than drywall screws? We're using what we call fender washers. And this is the key to the success of this box and making it so rigid. So it's a drywall screw that goes through this fender washer that binds so you create a lot of surface area to grab onto the foam core. And that makes it very stable. We have you know, all our tools over here. We got a screw gun that you're using. We used a chop saw to be able to cut these things, but obviously you could do it with just a normal skill saw. Now let's talk about construction in regards to how I'm putting this, how I'm rigging it. There's several ways to be able to affix this to your situation. We're gonna be using it on a dining room scene and we're gonna be sending wall spreaders across and then we'll be attaching this to the wall spreaders and we'll be hanging the lights to the wall spreaders and then affixing this to the wall spreaders themselves. We can do that with some L brackets. So we can take this like this and we can affix this to our two by fours by using these things from Home Depot. We can, you know, however way we want to do it, we get like easily three screws into this thing and we're able to affix this to the two by four. Another way is to go with screw eyes. So you're able to you know, drill a hole down through here and then get a screw eye that goes the whole length of this and a bolt. And then this you can string and you could put uh, you know, sash cord or anything to be able to hang up into your ceiling. But again, very lightweight. Uh, the, the, the weight comes with the specific lights that you wanna use and you can decide to rig the lights to the wall spreaders or pole cats or whatever you have up in the ceiling, 
or you can rig them to the specific box itself. You can set up some one by threes with baby pins on them. I was asked just recently, you know, do you want me to eyeball it or do you want me to measure it? Well, one of the best ways to do that is just find the center of the board. So that would be the center because now it's completely balanced and you screw your baby pin right there. So these would be set on top of the box like this. And then you'd screw them in depending on where you want to put your lights. And then if we want to go with some of the bicolor aperture lights, we could load these in here. They have really nice spread and we can rig that in there like that. And we can put that up there and it's got about two feet to spread before it hits the diffusion. Now, if we didn't want to rig it to there and we rig this to the, uh, to the wall spreader, then that would sit up here and it would have about three feet till it hit the diffusion or two and a half feet before it hit the diffusion by hanging the light source up above. But this is very simple. You know, you take that, screw into this, hang your light storm, cable it up. And the cool thing with these bicolor light storms is they have a whole remote control setup where I can change the color temperature remotely, I can turn it on and off, I can dim it, I can do all that stuff, and I don't have to ever go into the box. That is simple. DMX technology that we use on our Hollywood movie sets, but it's all right there in a very, very price conservative, not break the bank kind of thing where you're not running DMX cables and, and crazy dimmer boards and all that. It's all in this small little remote. So I can put many lights on specific channels. The ones that have this gray action here are the ones that are by color so I can go tungsten or daylight. And I'm able to control the lights all remotely and dim them up, dim them down, change the color temp, all within this box. And it's just running, you know, one stinger line to as many as you wanna put in here. Now, the cool thing about the light storm, if I was doing a day dining room scene, let's say a Thanksgiving room scene, and I wanted to be able to have enough punch on this top source to also equal out the, the light that's outside, I'd probably put six of these babies in here. I just like line them right up. I'd get six all the way across here and then I'd put full grid on the bottom. So it was very super soft. So I have the punch. And then once you hang it up there, you wanna put black duvetine uh, over the top to be able to contain that light so it doesn't blast off the diffusion and uh, blast into your white ceiling and also fill the whole room. That's something that you always wanna remember. Light control is huge. You rig this soft box, you do all this beautiful stuff, but then if you don't put a top on it, it's gonna blast into the ceiling and all this beautiful light control that we've used to contain this soft box now goes away because it's bouncing up into the ceiling and it's gonna fill all of your walls. And it kind of defeats the purpose of the soft box itself. All right, so now let's talk about a different way to light and illuminate your soft box. I used a lot of these in Prague. They're very, very lightweight panels and they're incredibly soft. They go from 3000 Kelvin up to 5600 Kelvin. They're completely DMX compatible, so you're able to control them remotely. Now, the cool thing about this baby is it expands out to a very large source. And this is the Luminaire Max switch. So think about this. This is the output of an airy sky panel and it weighs 15 pounds less and it's almost two and a half times the size. Okay, we're gonna use this system here where we're able to lock it in now that we've folded it. 
And we do this on both sides. You lift it up, slide it over, get in it. Now it's rigid. Okay, so we took something that you can easily put in a bag like this over here. So for your traveling case, you're able to travel with something like that and your light folds out into almost a four by size. Then we're gonna take this, we're gonna put this on top of our soft box. Okay, and we would rig this. There's a, a baby clamp here that we can put on here and we can rig it directly to the uh, wall spreader or we could literally mount these things. Uh, I could cut out this little, little area here where this is the, the, the area that it goes in for the uh, bale to turn it into a light that you can put on stands. I'd kind of knurl this out just a little bit so it's set even. And then we could anchor and screw into this box if we wanted this to be the thing. And I'd put two of these one here, one here, and then a one footer across. And the one footers are really nice. And it comes with this beautiful uh, diffuser as well. So if you wanna use the diffuser, you can, but in this case, we got plenty of diffusion and white source to be able to bounce around. Now you can take the ballast off to make it lighter but then this would go right across here and we'd rig that like that. So we'd go with two uh, of the uh, maxis and then one with just the switch, uh, the small one in the center. And that will illuminate this absolutely incredible. All of it, DMX, everything from the ground, all done remotely. All right. You're in a place that you don't have foam core. You're in a place that you don't have the necessary tools other than like some wood. Okay, I got your back. I was just in Italy. They don't have foam core, doesn't exist. The only thing you can use to bounce with is what we call poly or beadboard except our beadboard in the States is only about an inch thick. The beadboard in Italy is three inches thick. It's this thick and big four by eight sheets. So that's what you use for your bounce, which is awesome. And they have these big forks that you stab through the three inch thick poly and then you put them into C stands. But you can't obviously build that out of a soft box so how do I build a soft box when I don't have foam core? Well, you do it with bed sheets. And that's kind of what we did. We got some white bed sheets. Now these are an off white, but you can get my drift. And we literally surrounded the whole soft box with the bed sheet. So that became the white and the reflective. And then to be able to support it, we took these little membranes and we put them down on the sides here. So if you can see down in here, we, we basically built a frame. And by building this frame, I was able to take the bed sheet all the way around and staple it to it so it became more of a box. And then the coolest thing in the world, you can keep this thing so lightweight, you go out and you can buy this at Smart and Final. Any place has their black tablecloths and they're incredibly lightweight. So you don't even need expensive duvetine. So now I can take this black tablecloth and you can see, you know, that's the sun, okay? And it's just starting to glow through. So if I doubled it up and they're literally 99 cents a piece, if I double it up, it's not coming through at all. And you can get rolls of this stuff if you want to, but you can see doubled up, there's no sun coming through it at all. 
So you could literally, for $4, you could encircle this whole thing and with bed sheets and doubled up black tablecloths. And it's very lightweight. And you just go around and you staple it to the membrane of that frame. And then you put whatever diffusion you might want to do. Again, if you don't have the money to go out and buy half grid cloth or full grid cloth, you can go to your local Bed Bath & Beyond and get soft frost or a half soft frost shower curtain and staple that into the interior of this as well. So you're looking at one by threes, you're looking at fender washers and drywall screws, you're looking at bed sheets, and you're looking at shower curtains from Bed Bath & Beyond, and you're looking at black tablecloth to be able to create your soft box. Because when it's all said and done, you gotta go with what you have. And in Italy, we had no foam core, but we had plenty of lumber, and we had plenty of bed sheets, and we had plenty of black tablecloths to be able to illuminate that. And then, depending on what type of lights you have, Christ, you could put string of bulbs in here. You could get very inventive with all this. You don't need all very expensive lights. You go with what you have in your kit. Tota lights. This is how I used to build these things back in the day. I put totas all in here. Those like Tota kits that you can buy online for under $45 now, not a problem. Some four 1Ks in here and, and now you're doing great. And if you don't wanna be fully tungsten, then you gel it. But this is the kind of the idea that you're building a box that you can contain as a soft source to emulate what a chandelier, what, a, what the lights in a dining room or breakfast nook, wherever those things are, you're using this box to control that light so it doesn't fly all over the windows and you're ready to rumble with this baby.